Hello everyone, this is Dr. Meyer here, back with a video for you on beaming, a guide to rhythmic notation. Let's get started. What is beaming? When we beam rhythmic durations together, we are grouping them into beats. These smaller rhythms are consolidated under one beam in order to make the rhythm clearer to read. Notational devices like flags, dots, stems, and ties are all influenced based on how they are beamed. They may look differently if they are not part of a beamed group. The beaming that occurs within a beat is specific to certain meters and can look differently based on these meters. So how do we know what we should beam together and what we shouldn't beam together? First, you should determine the beat value of your meter. Whether it's simple or compound, you'll end up with two, three, or four beats in regular meters. So we're not talking about any asymmetrical meters here. As a notational practice, we try to keep the beats separate so as not to obscure the beats within their measure. Occasionally though, you will see strong beats grouped with weak beats in quadruple meter. And this is a standard practice either way so you could see it both ways. Once you have determined your meter, you can group rhythms into single beats through beaming and ties. Let me show you. In simple meter, the beat divides evenly into two divisions and again into two subdivisions, etc. and so on. Once you've found your beat value, say in 4-4, four, four, you'll have four quarter note beats. These beats will divide into two beamed together eighth notes and into a beamed group of sixteenth notes and so on down the rhythm tree. For example, here is the same rhythm presented at four different beat levels. You can see that the beaming supports each of the beat levels and keeps each beat separate from one another. Take these two examples in 4-4 four, four and 4-8. Four, the same rhythmic durations in 4-4 four, four, counted as two and a are beamed together here because they represent one beat in 4-4. Four, four. Whereas the same rhythmic durations represent one, two, and in four, eight. So they will not be beamed together in order to preserve the beats in that meter. It's your turn to practice. Take this rhythm, which is beamed and tied incorrectly, and rewrite it so that it fits into the given meter of four, four. Pause the video now and take your time. You should have gotten these beaming groups that clearly delineate all the beats. Most importantly, the tie into beat 2 and the separation of the beaming of beat 3 are the most noticeable differences. We want to make sure to never obscure beats 2 and 3 in quadruple meter because of the strength of beat 3 in these meters. The final beat 4 was also obscured through a whole quarter note value and that needed to be broken up with a tie as well to not obscure beat four. In compound meter, we have an unequal division of the main dotted beat into three divisions, which in turn divide into two subdivisions as we move down the rhythm tree. In compound meter, you take your meter, say for instance, six, eight, and find the divided beat value. In this case, that is the eighth note or the bottom note of your meter signature. Multiply this value by three to get your dotted rhythm value. So in compound meter, your big beats are always going to be a dotted value. Here, we will find the dotted quarter note as the beat level in six, eight. This in turn divides into three beamed eighth notes that represent one beat. Below this, you can see the subdivided 16th notes also divided into one beat. Each layer of the rhythm tree is difficult to represent in compound meter because we need a new dotted rhythm focus for each beat level. Let me show you. You see here we have the same rhythm written out at three different metric levels in compound meter. In 6-4, four, 
the beat is a dotted half note divided into three quarters and then into groups of two eighth note subdivisions. Whereas in 6-8, there is a dotted quarter note beat value, which divides unevenly into three eighths and two sixteenths respectively. That eighth note grouping at the subdivided level in 6-4 is different than the eighth note grouping in 6-8 because of the level of subdivision that we're looking at that's taking place in the compound meter. One is the first subdivision and one is the second subdivision and they are beamed according to those beats. In 616, the similar nesting structure appears with the 16th note groups into beats and down into those 32nd note groups in the beats. As in this example, where the 16th notes are the subdivision of the beat, they are all beamed together because they represent one beat in 6-8. In the second example, though, they are beamed separately because they are representing two beats and thus not beamed together. Now practice once more by putting this rhythm more convincingly into 6-4, the meter of 6-4, and observing the divisions into beats by adding ties as necessary. Remember, your big beat in 6-4 is going to be a dotted half note. Pause the video now and take your time. Here's a solution that breaks up that whole note on the downbeat into a dotted half note, our beat level, tied to a quarter note in the first measure. And the second measure similarly has a half note obscuring the division between beats one and two. So a tie must be added here as well. Incidentally, this original rhythm was very close to being able to be written completely in 3-2, which looks like this. The only change was that the consolidation of the tied rhythm in the second bar to the quarter note, which is sort of a matter of preference. It could be written either way, depending on who's writing it. Rhythms in simple triple and compound duple can be made to appear in either meter, depending on their grouping and their accent. So it's especially important to beam properly within these meters. A few more details of notation and consolidation for you here. Even though rests are combined to create one duration, there are no beams within rests for this reason. So we can observe a few practical guidelines closely associated with beaming for our rests here. For instance, we want to avoid dotted rests in simple meter unless they are less than one beat. If we have a dotted rest that represents more than one beat, it could not encapsulate a whole beat unit and therefore would make our notation unnecessarily complicated. Just use the equivalent rest of the beat you are trying to account for and you should be good to go. Similarly, instead of adding a double dotted eighth rest here in this first measure, which is, I guess, sort of standard, but a very unfamiliar notation to most of us, you could build up the beat by using the fractions of those rests next to one another. So that 32nd note flag, the 16th flag, and the eighth flag in that order from smallest to largest duration. That would be easier to read. Lastly, Bridging between weak beats in quadruple meter is problematic for rests as well. And so we want to be careful to only fold beats one and two together and three and four together to emphasize that metric stress in quadruple meter. So this middle example here obscures our beat three. It should not be notated this way, but rather on the right here where we have two rests instead. This is a the preferred way to preserve 4-4. We learned a lot about beaming in this video. We know that we want to make each beat as clear as possible by beaming all the components of each beat together and separating larger rhythmic durations by ties in order to preserve the individual beats. Quadruple meter is tricky and can sometimes consolidate the first and second halves of the measures. Both in beaming and in rests, we discovered. 
but not of across beat three. Finally, rests will follow a lot of the same rules as rhythms, even though there are actually no beaming of rests taking place. That's all for now, and good luck with your beaming. Thanks for watching.